Welcome everybody to uh, part one of Let's Get Tenure. Uh, I've noticed that my achievements are a little lacking in this game. Uh, this tenure achievement is really kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, 200 years, you know, late game it can take an hour, sometimes maybe more to get through a single year. So the longest I've ever made it is maybe 120, 140, maybe 160 years. Uh, and you kind of wonder why, why I just don't power through or reload an old game. Uh, and the, the truth is, if you, if you get a big city like that and you are not very meticulous from the beginning with where you're placing things, uh, it becomes kind of a cluster. And it becomes a lot of work and it takes a lot of time to disassemble that and rebuild it to kind of an optimal situation. So you find yourself in one of these one of these situations where you uh, you know are 150 years in but you're not really happy with your city and you still need to put in 50 hours of gameplay to get to this achievement uh, so hopefully this time around we're going to make it a little bit more lightweight uh, a little bit faster keep the city population as low as possible so that it doesn't overload the processor uh, and things like that and, and for this game the general settings that we're going to be playing on are valleys although I think mountains would work just fine uh, the terrain size is medium uh, you might be able to do this on a small map uh, the smaller that the map is the better performance I think in the in the late phases of the game uh, climate I'm just gonna do fair uh, it's kind of medium it's right in the middle uh, disasters will be on starting conditions are hard and so the beginning of the game is really kind of slow and so I wanted to just kind of do the work and then show you what it looks like and then run through the first couple of years so the first thing you want to do when you start banish is just pause the game right that's the first thing don't let don't let these guys walk away don't let them go anywhere for that matter okay pause the game let them stand there and then you want to go survey the map and for this particular map uh, we're looking at map seed 1789105588 uh, again you can see the valleys medium fair disasters on starting conditions are hard uh, I didn't want to go in there and then for mods we have absolutely nothing enabled right now uh, you know later on it might be a good idea to use disable smoke effect uh, the flatten terrain tool is really great CC is like a whole different other game obviously uh, banish plus is kinda like a speed version of banished uh, none of these are up to date I don't think but uh, I haven't played in a while so as I said you wanna just pause the game uh, the next thing you wanna do or that I always do is go ahead do you see that flashing enable this you want to always be looking at your statistics you want to know what time of year it is uh, when you're when you're running at 10 speed you always want to keep an eye on this window because it'll tell you if you're running out of food it'll tell you all of the things you need to be watching out for and then I almost always have the profession window up right there uh, it lets me kind of see how many laborers I have the lower your laborers the the worse it is because when people start dying you don't have laborers to to step into those jobs you know so a school for example that's a really a negative thing uh, but the next thing you want to do you can see that I have a ton of things queued to build and they're all paused and there's massive roads so you know when I survey this you can see these two rivers I mean here's the, here's the main river right goes all the way to the top uh, we see real nice flat plains along the river really good areas to expand into uh, we have this little mountain here that'll be a nice place to put a tunnel uh, but what you can see initially is we have this fork and let's look at it a different perspective so this this fork is going to prevent me from crossing the rivers to get to the stone iron and wood that are there until I build bridges uh, I mean, that's just that's just how how it works so my my starting 
position is right here and you know obviously I'm gonna have to move south that's gonna be the first move uh, we need to be getting stone we need to be getting iron we need to be getting resources before we can build bridges and what I really think is a good idea is to start by pinstriping uh, so you can see all these roads and the way that I did this you know starting uh, looking at where the villagers are and then looking to the southeast I can see this mountain range right here uh, so you know what I did is I just clicked arbitrarily on the map somewhere and try to drag it straight through it and you can see how it snaps around the side and it lets me know where the straight line is so I can build you know a road just like this and it'll go all the way to the top and almost all the way to the bottom. And what this lets me do is it lets me pick where the bridges are gonna go. So for, for example, sometimes you might find, uh, this is a really good example here. So I've chosen to build my bridge here. And if we go down and we build this road, you can see that it's not as far to the uh, west as it could be. And the reason for that, and this is really my OCD that kicks in, is so for example you see I can't build a bridge here uh, I can build a bridge here right but if I build the bridge there and I go south right everything looks great everything looks great until I get to this little this little guy and that's no good for anybody so what I really want to do is have just kind of straight nice simple lines uh, to expand and not have to worry where I'm setting things up and so what I've done is just gone around, continued to pinstripe until I had bridges all over the place. And we just went in, we paused the construction on these. So no one's gonna try to build these. Uh, once done, what this has assisted me in is, is telling me where I can build my initial Forester Lodge, lodge the Gatherer's Hut, the Hunting Cabin, and the, uh, the Storage Barn right up here. It's also showing me where I can build a stockpile, a woodcutter, all of my initial homes. Uh, <clears throat> you can kind of see right here what I'm talking about. So we have a house here uh, and a house here. And the road, which is going right behind the stockpile, is now completely flush, right? So it just looks, it looks really clean. Uh, this was actually the last road that I, I made. So you can kind of see how this area might be divided in two. Uh, later on in the game. Uh, we'll see if, if we build that many roads. But the next thing to do is just go in, select the whole area, and just get rid of the roads. And now they're gone. Uh, you know, no one's going to build anything. Everything's great. The only thing I have active right now is my stockpile. I need this to be built immediately. And the next thing I need to do is get some stone, uh, some iron, and some wood. Actually, it's stone, wood, and then iron. <clears throat> so you can see right here we have a forester who's going to be in this area. So all of the lumber to the north is going to be uh, is going to be harvested. And we do that like this. And one thing to always be careful of if you're selecting a large area, you can see at the top there we're we're kind of nicking into a few trees on the north shore of that river. Uh, this this is a really bad thing. It'll make your laborers try to get there, and they could end up walking all the way down here and then all the way up the side. In the winter time, they might freeze to death or starve. So just be real careful when you're uh, when you're using the the harvest tool like this. Uh, so that looks pretty good. Make sure we get more stone. All right. And so now we're ready to just hit play. And, and the advantage of this entire system is, is that you do not have to go in and um, you don't have to go in and do anything basically like the whole the whole game is built out for you right away uh, how did these roads end up getting built like that that's really strange that well that's a glitch okay so I see what happened so when I uh, that's really interesting uh, so these roads were not not actually built obviously but what occurred I believe we can test this theory really 
quickly. Let's see. Cancel the removal. All right, so we're gonna cancel all these roads. I don't wanna. I don't wanna get rid of them. Oh man, this is not turning out the way. <coughs> Sorry about that. So it seems. Uh, wow, how do I fix this? I don't think I can. So let's let's check something out. So if we draw a map, if we draw one of these straight, it is not actually there, right? And I can go in and remove it. And it's gone magically, right? So let's try this. Like this. Let's see. So we go high. Quit. Let's slow that game back up. Yeah, see? So when you save the game and you come back, uh, you cannot automatically get rid of a road that you've never built in the first place. Uh, so, <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart. I'm going to kind of recreate the same grid. And uh, I guess that's where the second video will start. And we'll go through the first five to ten years. Uh, so you guys can get a, uh, an idea of the order that these initial buildings are going to uh, uh, grow in. Uh, so we'll see you next time.